The official sounds of spring, the crack of the wooden bat, baseballs hitting leather gloves, and renewed optimism for 30 baseball franchises. Even though only about eight of them have a legit shot at the championship. Crack open a cold one and see how baseball colludes to break our hearts this year. What the hell are you guys even doing? You've somehow deluded yourselves into thinking that you can compete, yet don't have the pitching core to even come close to battling the giants of your division. You better hope you're right in trying to supplement this squad. The hitters are aging, Zach Britton is out for a few months, and Manny Machado has one year left before he drowns in money. You know damn well that Angelos isn't going to pony up for him. All the Sox are hoping for this year is that they aren't relegated to second fiddle behind the Yankees. What Boston receives is a managerial change and the Dombrowski special of throwing money at everything that moves. The newest recipient of a retirement fund is J.D. Martinez, who was in limbo with the Sox for a few months before finally agreeing to a contract. The youth should stave off an unfortunate freefall, but then you remember they're paying the panda for another three years. Jesus Christ, that was an awful contract in hindsight. The evil empire is officially back in business. This offseason was full of splashes to help them back to another World Series. Cashman pulled a heel turn by going from preaching about in-house development to going, fuck it, let's get Giancarlo. Now they have the two reigning MVPs, more riches in its minor league system, and the entirety of sports media is all over its dick. The giant has been awoken from its slumber. It was nice knowing all of you. Please collapse so I can laugh at squirming Yankees fans. Tampa, the fire sale is in full effect. Everything must go for pennies on the dollar. Franchise faces, cost-controlled players, underachieving pitchers strip everything to the goddamn bone. You guys may need an escape from the misery this coming season, and you'll get it with our friends at Amino Apps. Unlike Tropicana Field, it's the place where you truly want to be this summer. Don't know what Amino is? It's simply put a mobile network of communities for every interest in the world. For example, there's the Chell community, which I've taken a liking to because hockey is glorious and we are not worthy of its beauty. In this case, the Grand Slam community is a haven for all things relating to the diamond. You can take quizzes, create polls, wax poetic about the history of the game, mingle and chat with thousands of other baseball fans, and even participate in live in-game chat rooms. You can contribute your own content to the Grand Slam community about how your team is going to the World Series, or needs to sell everything off the deadline. With live feeds to Twitter and MLB trade rumors, it's a one-stop shop for your baseball fix this summer and beyond. Amino Apps, it's a Grand Slam and a half. Race fans may be angry at me for turning this into a shameless plug, but your team doesn't have any dignity. Why do you think they spit in your face this past offseason repeatedly? Rev up that glorious tank, Tampa. You're digging deep into the hole. So, Toronto, why aren't you trying to rebuild right now? Because it's 2015. That is honestly the most credible reason I've heard so far this offseason. It surely won't be because of your team of geriatrics locked into long contracts or on the brink of expiration. They added to this with even more old guys who are past their prime. This is all but the end of the road. Josh Donaldson has one year left before he gets to secure his children's college fund and the Jays have some interesting prospects knocking on the door. If they fall to shit early, expect a blow up. It would be the only logical thing to do. This may be the year where the tanks are decommissioned and the Sox build off of their momentum. Southside has some intriguing pieces to watch this year. Jose Abreu is a stud and a half, Yoan Mancada oozes talent, and the farm system looks brighter than the sun. There should be some forward steps taken this year. Right, guys? I'm not going to hold my breath. This team is full of chokers and failures that shit themselves come October. I'm still pissed at these fuckers for unleashing two of the most toxic fan bases in baseball to lord over us with their posturing. It would be a fitting justice for this team to sink into the Cuyahoga like Chief Wahoo, but they will probably be paper champions while getting obliterated in the playoffs again this year. Fuck this team. Like Mike Illich, the dream of a World Series title in Detroit is dead. The fact that they failed to secure one with their riches of talent will go down as one of the great failures in modern sports. But this team had been treading water for years. With the demise of Mr. I, the Tigers can finally press the reset button. Good news, Detroit, you're finally tanking. This team will rebuild towards a glorious future under Ron Gardenhire? Aren't those two ideas counterproductive? Last year is looking to be the norm the Royals will be facing for a while to come. The farm system isn't impressive and they lost two of their best hitters to free agency. The pitching doesn't have the depth to go anywhere and they are being leapfrogged by a few teams. What I'm trying to say is this. You're done. The sooner you realize it, the better off you'll be. At the very least, you got a World Series out of this score. We'll see you guys when David Glass croaks.
This is a team hoping to avoid the sophomore slump, if you will. The surprise of the year for the American League has addressed their starting pitching and overall depth by exploiting a buyer's market in free agency. Even if they were said to have overachieved last year, there are still some pieces with upside here. In this, the last year of Joe Maurer's contract, let it be that you usurp the Indians and not lose to the goddamn Yankees again. So you are finally perched on the top of the food chain. How's it feel, Houston? Don't get a big head and slump around like the Cubs did, though. There are a few squads in the AL hungry to devour you whole. The majority of the team is returning, plus they have further bolstered the pitching train with Garrett Cole. Hopefully he will not give up 40 home runs in the box known as Minute Maid Park. There isn't much competition in your division again, so you should run away with it. Keyword here is should. I'm proud of you, Angels. You've finally taken my advice and given Mike Trout some real reinforcement. Leading the way is wingman Justin Upton, boasting a nice contract. Zach Cozart and Japanese wunderkind Shohei Otani, a two-way machine that should easily bolster that once-awful pitching staff. If the Angels can manage to scrounge up depth that isn't completely atrocious, they've got a chance at the postseason. This optimism will probably be shot in September like last year. It's time for another year of deep sea diving in the hopes the A's can find capable talent on the cheap. The lowest payroll in all of baseball requires some ingenuity in finding players. Think about that. Out of all the fire sales this offseason, it's the Moneyball squad that's outdoing them all. Now that's what I call a market inefficiency. Also, your team is shit and you should feel bad for it. The MLBPA has noticed just as much. Wake me up when you guys start caring again. Oh boy, everyone, are you ready for yet another year where the Mariners hype everyone up for April before kicking you repeatedly in the dick? I sure am. You yet again went out and bought more pieces in a faint attempt at relevance. In comes D. Gordon at center field. But he's not the only one coming from Miami. You brought back Ichiro. Maybe his twilight doesn't go sour like Griffey's. And he's going to be joined by Shohei Oh, so, right, you didn't get him. Remember that feeling you had when he signed with someone else? Expect that amplified by 10 come June. This is probably your last chance to compete in this window, too. Light a candle for King Felix. Rangers, your old friend in mediocrity has been expecting you with bated breath. You two have been joined at the hip for the majority of your time in Arlington, and it's looking to be an extended stay once again. What better way to celebrate than by going back to the well of bringing in old names that are well past their prime? This year's crop includes Edinson Volquez, Tim Lincecum, and Big Sexy. It's like John Daniels picked up a baseball magazine from 2012. You might have seen an editorial on six-man rotations in there, too. For their next trick, they will build that new stadium where all hope will die every August. It says something when the Braves have somehow managed to embarrass themselves even further than they have. Liberty Media has taken this once competently run franchise and driven it into the ground. The new stadium is looking like a disaster thanks to traffic issues and a local populace that despises it. The team has a rich prospect pool, but is still a year or two away from making a serious impact. Even better, the MLB chose to throw the book at the organization. The Braves lost the majority of their international talent they acquired and their old GM was banned for life. Quite an eventful offseason if I say so. Hopefully this season is as quiet as their stadium most nights. The depressing fact of the matter is despite all of this, they aren't even the most pathetic team in their division. That title would go to these guys. After Jeffrey Loria finally sold the team after years of terrible ownership, the Marlins faithful had renewed hope in the new guard. What they got was baseball's version of Bain Capital. Derek Jeter and company took any sort of goodwill the city and fans had left for the Marlins and chucked it into the incinerator. They had to shed that cost like everything else. I'm dead serious, it's not just players, it's goddamn everything that's being cut. Soon enough, the in-game entertainment is going to be some hobo hurling insults at your dead mother. All that vagabond needs to do is tell the truth. For the fourth time in 20 years, you're going tanking. God, this organization is such a joke. Grab your gloves and sunflower seeds. It's time once again for Mets Baseball. A special shout out to last season's World Series champions, Colin McHugh and Carlos Beltran, the former Mets. Last year for us, we're not going to talk about that. This year is full of things and stuff. Terry Collins has ascended the spiritual plane to abuse that great bullpen in the sky. Godspeed, you bastard. Being a second-rate New York team calls for some second-rate free agent signings. We got Jay Bruce back to solidify the outfield. Todd Frazier is here to smack 30 dingers while hitting in a nice 215 clip. Heading first is Adrian Gonzalez. He was good once. To top it all off, we've secured all-star Jason Vargas. That sound must mean the baseball season is upon us. Be amazed at how we will somehow disappoint you despite ridiculously low expectations. We might make the wild card again or you can hope Fred Will Pond will think life is another Ponzi scheme. Either way, we still aren't the Knicks. 
Last year was a disaster, but it did have its bright spots. Reese Hoskins turned into goddamn Babe Ruth feasting on pitches like the Bambino feasted at the buffet line. The prospect pool is still strong, but this is the year you have to show us something. Anything. You guys were one of the few teams opening the wallets in free agency. Enjoy your complimentary Carlos Santana to go with your Jake Arrieta. Let's hope the baseball gods have noticed you've suffered enough punishment for ruin tomorrow, Junior. Let me be as clear as possible. This is your last chance with Bryce Harper. You've squandered enough of his talent with years of astonishing levels of collapse and misery. Last year was no exception. Dusty Baker is gone, but it appears that ownership is starting to tighten up the purse strings. You're going to have to make do with what you've already got. The only reason why you're a shoe in for the NL East title is because the rest of your division is a farce. It means nothing to you guys anymore anyway. It's a given like Game 5 of the NLDS. The relentless machine of Theo Epstein and the Cubs stops for nothing. Even as last year was a step back, the core is still young and the pitching staff revamped. Hopefully that World Series hangover doesn't last another hundred years for your children's sake. Talents like you have on display doesn't exactly grow on trees. In fact, you've got a really big fish this time, too. By the gods of Wrigley, you madmen did it. You brought in the goat of Game 7. You do realize the whole point of a tank is to try and improve the team for the future, right? Are you guys ever going to develop any sort of pitching? How about you stop wasting that hitting core? This team makes me want to bitch as well. There is renewed hope for the Brew Crew. Last season, they came up just a bit short, but this is what they are hoping is the return to relevance. Injecting the outfield with Lorenzo Cain and Christian Yelich will aid with such endeavors. The key here is to make sure certain elements weren't a total fluke, in particular the pitching. The Cubs and Cardinals won't take your eyes lightly. They want the status quo to remain so. The less I have to say about this team, the better. They sold off their best assets for a bunch of magic beans. The players have criticized them for doing fuck all in the offseason, yet management is so far up its own ass that they think this team can make the playoffs. The only way the Bucks are making it that far is if every single goddamn thing goes right. It ain't happening with this roster. It was nice to taste what real baseball was like for a few years. It'll be another 20 before it happens again at this rate. It felt good not to see the Cardinals in the playoffs last year. But you know them, they will always linger. With management as competent and forward-thinking as they have, the cards will be the cockroach after a nuclear explosion. Your new weapon for the year is Marcelo Zuna, freed from the Miami fire sale to play on a real contender for the first time in his career. Just go into a cage with the Cubs and kill each other. The rest of baseball will thank you for your sacrifice. So you finally got pitching again. So you made it to the playoffs only to get stomped by the Los Angeles Greenbacks. You should be competitive for at least the next few years. Keyword here is should. That is, if the hit to team depth doesn't kill you. If your pitching is the real deal, you should be fine. Maybe you'll bother to show up in the NLDS this year. Or get stuffed by elite pitching again, that is also an option for you. This year is critical. Pitching killed you in the wildcard game last year. So you've added steel armaments to that bullpen of yours. Hopefully they will not fall victim to Coors Field. Maybe your offense won't rely on two players this year either. Charlie Blackman will be a free agent at season's end. If there was ever a time to do something with yourselves, it is now. The NL West may be daunting, but you guys have standards to live up to for once. Don't crumble again, for all of our sakes. Years of flexing and money burning yielded a World Series appearance last fall. The less said about that, the better. This time around, the Dodgers held back from their free spending ways and offloaded some of their bad contracts onto the Braves. They did get Matt Kemp back, even if he's nowhere near the athlete that he was. Once again, there will be no excuses for the Dodgers. It's World Series or bust. Clayton Kershaw can only take so much failure. Good news, Padres. The gruesome experiment is about over and the tanks are being put back in storage. Last year was basic overachieving, but the fruits of the farm system should be soon ready for harvest. In fact, Preller desired the spotlight of off-season champion again. In comes the return of Chase Headley, Freddie Galvis, and Eric Hosmer, who got the huge-ass boondoggle when no one else was giving that sort of term. San Diegans will beat their chest and boast, but in reality, it'll probably be fourth place in their division. What fun it will be. The Giants are doing everything in their power to ensure the even-year magic is sustained. Honestly, after last year, there was nowhere to go but up. Injected into the engine this season, our old franchise faces Evan Longoria and Andrew McCutcheon, creating one of the highest payrolls in baseball. Congratulations, you have successfully amassed the 2013 All-Star Team. May your old men have some chance in hell of returning to form and winning a stacked NL West. Of course.
In terms of predictions, I think the American League goes the way of the Yankees, Indians, and Astros winning the divisions with the Twins and Red Sox as the wild cards. The National League lines up as Nationals, Cubs, and Dodgers winning the divisions with the Diamondbacks and Cardinals dealing with wild card bullshit. I wish you all the best of luck. The majority of you are screwed this year. Play ball. Here's a ground ball right side, could do it. The Houston Astros are world champions for the first time in franchise history. You saw Jim Crane, their owner, who took control in 2011, the move to the American League in 2013. 